Welcome gamers to this, I guess it's a one video primer for Shadow Empires. My name is Daz Tactic. I'll be trying to sort of take you through this particular game. It's an incredibly good game, but it's also a game that scares people and there's reasons for that, but there's also ways around that. So I thought I'd make this video just to sort of help really brand new players actually just ease into the game or if you've actually had the game for a while but always just feel like oh you know it's really just it's just too complex uh, i'm going to be trying to treat this as a way to just make it more understandable you can see there that the reviews are very positive and it does sort of it does it, you know it is an incredibly good game it's one of my favorite games and it just says shadow empire is a deep turn-based 4x war game with a unique blend of military focus procedurally generated content and role-playing uh features and that really is a good summary of the actual game you're playing on completely procedurally generated planets but i'll go through for your first few games anyway and then what I would suggest that you do is then have a look at, at sort of like deeper tutorials as to how to then start to tweak things. So I'm not going to be going into anything too complex. We're almost going to be sort of enjoying the game for what the game presents us rather than trying to min-max things. I'm not going to be trying to do that. I find that with most of these sorts of complex games, you can play them where you play it as a role-play game essentially and then you're sort of just having fun with it and so we're going to treat that as the as the approach we're going to go into the game it is it's still got complexity so just be aware of that this is not going to dumb it down but it will mean that you can bypass certain elements i might just point where they are if you then decide to go back and have a bit of a look at things a bit deeper later on. Now, of course, you're gonna to need to get it from Steam and, um, and or actually you can get it either from the Matrix Game Store or from Steam. Now, I tend to play with the Matrix Game Store because I do like to play the beta versions and I will actually suggest that you make these changes, but I'll go through how to set that up. But I'll be using the Steam version of the game to then sort of talk us through how to actually build the game into what the way I like to play it. Now, I do like the Matrix version. That's one that I mainly play because the updates for the beta process come out earlier than they do for Steam. So let's go through and just set up the game itself. So once you've actually downloaded the game, you know, you've bought it, you've downloaded it, just go to your library. And so just make sure that you've got Shadow Empire selected back over through here in your, in your library settings. A few things we're going to do here. One thing we're going to be doing is going and right clicking and then just go to manage, uh, sorry, do go to properties, <laughs> go there first, and then go down to betas and just click on the drop down and just go into the open beta. This will give you the latest versions of the game. And look, sometimes there's things that don't go 100% right, but it's it's yeah quite stable and will tend to be a better version than the current version of the game uh, because it's going to have all the new stuff in it. So uh, I would strongly suggest going that way. As I say, this doesn't get updated all that uh, all that often, uh, but uh, it's certainly in compared to the Matrix version of the game. By the way, if you do buy the Matrix version, you do get a Steam key, I think, as well that you can actually then go and sort of redeem. So whichever way, we'll we'll just use the Steam version because. Um, that, you know, it's it's sort of, I guess most people that will be watching this will, will have the Steam version. So anyway, we've got the open beta. Uh, that's now, that's all we had to do in here. We'll just close that one off. And you saw there that in that period of time, it, it did actually update and, and load. It's, it's not a very big file that it does bring in. It does make a lot of little changes, though, to the way that the game looks at things, like the units change, for example. So we'll use this one. The, you can see now it's got Shadow Empire open beta is the version that we're actually playing there. Now, the next thing we want to do is the in the game itself, um, there's only one mod I'm going to recommend <laughs> in this particular playthrough. There's a lot of other mods that I do highly, highly recommend to make the gameplay more fun and enjoyable, uh, as in like this Pimus's um, uh, sort of graphic mod, which changes a lot of the actual graphics for the cards in the game, which makes it uh, really quite a nice in uh, immersive sort of feel to the actual game itself. But we'll play, they're, they're not going to impact the gameplay. But the one mod that really does impact the gameplay, and I sort of I sort of wish that the game actually had something built into it, is actually a mod that I created. So I'll go, I'll show you where that is, so you can download that. Okay, so there'll be a link in the description down below. <laughs> if you're watching this on a computer, if you're watching it on a smartphone um, or a smart, a smart TV, I don't know what we'll do. Anyway, <laughs> it's at my coffee.com slash Daz Tactics store. And uh, so there will be a link directly to this particular mod. What it does is it 
changes the graphics of the terrain so you can plan ahead, uh, which it, it's very important that you actually be able to sort of plan, like whether you, for example, if you're going through forest, that's going to give an advantage for, uh, for infantry. If you're uh, going across a mountain, infantry again get an advantage in through there. If there's open plains, it won't sort of show anything, like there's some plains down through here, for example, and they're better for tank forces. But you can still sort of work things out, and similarly with road building and things like that, you don't want to be building roads across mountains. So all this mod does is just tell you at a glance what the terrain actually is without having to just rely on the underlying look of the actual terrain itself. I think that this is an important mod in terms of being able to, um, to understand what the terrain is doing around you. It's very hard without this mod. Like, you know, for example, you wouldn't know that that was swamp there, for example, uh, your swamp there, you can sort of tell there's a bit of water up in through there, but it's it doesn't sort of stand out. Whereas that's telling you, yep, there's swamp, there's forest, there's a forest with a hill, there's a tall mountain in through here, running through the, that spine of, of mountains. Also, the way the game is set up is that different planets will have like different base colors as well. And that's all sort of procedurally generated. So the mod does help with that. So I would strongly suggest that you actually install this one mod if you're going to play any mod, this is the one. And I do hope that this is something like this is introduced into the game at some point in the future because I think it does need it just to help people plan. Anyway, I'm giving that a plug, <laughs> even though it's my mod. Uh, it's the one mod that I really can't play the game without. So I, th I thought I'd just sort of do that one. Anyway, you don't have to put any money in there. You can just you can just uh, designate zero and then just go and grab it. So it's, it is free, but it is through my coffee.com uh, uh, store. Okay, so you'll see over there, up that way, <laughs> I've got the actual game uh, that's been now loaded in from Steam over through here, and I do actually have the Terrain Icons mod that I've got installed over this side as well. So what, what we're going to do is we're just going to do a couple of little things first. We want to find where the game actually is, and, and this is completely safe to do this on your Steam version. Uh, I'll go through in detail what this what this has got in, in some detail actually. Just there's there's an aspect that doesn't change the game at all, and there's a, an aspect that changes the game slightly. So I'll just explain actually what that is inside the zip file. In fact, I'll just open that one up now. So you've got like two different folders in here. Just read the README um, if you wanted to sort of just just to double check how things actually do work. We won't worry about that one ourselves, uh, but it's because I'll just be showing you exactly what to do. In fact, maybe I should. Okay, so all that the readme actually then says is simply place the graphic alt directory into your game root and the graphic files will replace the in-game files. So this is how the game is designed to be modded, but not all the graphic files do get modded up in the game itself. And so there's, you can see there, there's graphics alt down through this side. So that was literally just a drag and drop, but I'll go through that in exactly how to do that one as well. And then the graphics one in here will replace a couple of the mod graphics for the default counters if you do want to have um, the uh, so yeah, unit token borders. Now, I prefer to have thinner borders than what the game actually has. And so I've got it, this is a, a little other extra mod. It's just a little bit of an addition to the actual graphics mod itself. Don't feel that you have to put that one in if you're at all concerned, because this one will override game files. The other one won't override any game files. But this one here, please note, if you copy the graphics directory into the root of the game, it will override the existing game files. Not all of them, of course, just those just those three files that were in here. They're the only ones that will actually be overridden. Uh, and um, this is the only way to activate the unit tokens to show a thin border around them, making it easier to see the stacking. So I prefer it, and I will just, I'll install that Again, that is not a critical thing. That's just a cosmetic um, view of it. But I'll just still go through it. Again, if you're at all unsure, the graphics alt is the way to go, and you'll see that in just a second. So what you need to do now is just go back to your Steam uh, library that you've got back over through here. So to open the, the game files up for all of this, you just go and right-click. Actually, I'm just right on the edge, aren't I? I'll just do it here so you can sort of see it up above my, my noggin. Uh, right-click. And then down through here, you can just go to manage and then you can just go to browse local files. So this is how we actually get access to the actual local files itself. That will then open up a directory here and it will then just basically have where Steam is, Common, Shadow Empire. So this is our root directory. So you'll notice that there's a graphics folder in through here. Let's just minimize that. So we've got our, our the actual Shadow Empire area. We've got the zip file that we just downloaded back over through here. And all you need to do is just drag it across. So there's no graphics alt folder. 
So this will actually create a new folder and then it will look for that. So just be aware that that's actually how the game actually works, but the graphics one we have to replace. So I'm just gonna grab both of those, drag them over into here, so copy to Shadow Empire. It happens pretty quickly, they're all done in there. So uh, the destination has three files with the same names. We wanna replace those. If you're gonna be using that other one through there, it's only those three files. Replace those names in, the, in there. And so that is all we need to do to mod the game. We're, that's, we've now done that. There's no easy way in, like, in terms of workshops or anything like that, otherwise I would do it. But that's sort of how we are going to be changing the graphics. And so most of the graphics you come across in the game will just be adding things into the graphics alt directory. So when we go in there, there's going to be sort of like a whole range of different files that now include in here with those graphic alterations that I've made for myself. So that's how we get there. Anyway, a bit of a long winded sort of explanation, but that gets us into that portion of the game. So we, I've just copied that one across to another directory. So that's the uh, that's all you need to do with that particular uh, terrain icon thing. I've like I'm just going to delete it. You, you don't. You can do whatever you like with it. Let's get into the game and start sort of playing. And if you're not going, I'll show you how to this tell almost immediately if the if that mod is installed. So we'll just go into the actual game itself. Uh, we will then click on play. By the way, the manual is very very thorough. So you may want to sort of use that as a bit of a reference. Now I have just changed the the um, the audio a little bit just to try to make it so it's not going to be too loud. And so it goes through a bit of a backstory. I think we'll skip past this for ourselves, but it's just giving you a bit of a story about how we arrive here. Actually, I'm guessing in one sense, if you are going to be approaching this as more of a role play game rather than a strategy game, which is sort of what I'm suggesting that you do, um, yeah, maybe just get a bit of an understanding. There is actually um, the Dissolution War destroys pretty much everything in the galaxy. So that's sort of where we're setting up is essentially we're building, we're building a game that starts billions of years in the past and then takes us through to the end of the dissolution war where everything has collapsed. Society's collapsed and all of the, yeah, it was a time where chaos and anarchy ripped apart civilization. And so this is at the end and we end up with Mad Max worlds. And that's essentially what we're going to be playing on. So new leaders are rising, eager for conquest, um, eager to reunite humanity. So that's sort of where we are at this point in time. And here we go, Shadow Empire. Uh, this is now version, you'll see, actually this is the at time of recording, the absolute current beta. This is version 1.12a, um, and that's where we're gonna start. So perfect, this is, uh, this is good. It, it usually takes a, a few days after a new beta patch has come out. By the way, if you're wanting to see what the beta patches are bringing in, uh, what you can do is just go to the Matrix forum for, for Shadow Empires and have a look at it in there. I won't, I won't go into the detail of that one because really this is just about how more casual players can actually sort of get into the actual game itself. So I've certainly spent a bit of time just at least getting the game set up. Let's go and start a new game and I'll go through this with a view to how a new player should approach the game. Again, a first time player or something like that, or if you're having, if you're frustrated with it. All right, here we go. It's actually a new day. I, I did record one, but I wasn't all that happy with it. So I'm going to start again. So that's why I've got a different shirt on today. So welcome guys. <laughs> now, when you choose your planetary class, choose whatever you like, but there are three strong reasons to choose the SIBA class. The first reason is that it's actually got water on it. Uh, or tend to have water on it. So, and water is very important. It just means if you've got easy access to water, you don't need to build ice mines. So that's gonna sort of set you up fairly smoothly uh, at the start of the game where you, where you can get rid of some of your assets right away and not have to sort of worry about maintenance of those particular assets. That's one reason. The second reason is it's more likely to have life on it than most other, other uh, planets. And so, it's going to then give you the capacity to sort of then have, like over the course of the billions of years of, of life development on the planet, we'll all sort of settle down, we'll end up with hydrocarbons, and so we'll end up with fuel sources. There should be, there should be ample fuel source on the planet, and you need that for your tanks, so that sort of uh, makes that a little bit easier. It means we don't have to manufacture it. We can sort of just go and mine it. And the third reason is that it's because it's usually quite a friendly planet and more Earth-like, um, you tend to have a lot more farmers as your minor factions in the planet or in, in the game. And they are quite good to deal with diplomatically. So they're a bit easier to deal with on, on average than the other types of, of uh, like raiders or slavers or 
uh, marauders um you know <laughs> you guys sort of got like mutant zombie type things as well farmers are your friendly next door neighbors and so you can win diplomatically just through through um th on a cyber class relatively easily with with just uh, using diplomacy with the with the farming minor factions so we'll have a bit of a look at that in this in this game i don't like playing that way personally i, I like the combat so but we'll play in this instance with that particular uh, approach because we're going to be looking at this one as i said before very much from a role play aspect about just having fun with whatever the game throws up at us and um but this one at least we get a good start so siva class history classes by all means again pick and choose what you want i'm just going to suggest that you go with spread out just to keep the other major players sort of away from where you actually are and um there's always a i noticed that with new players there's a, a big push to click on alien life Probably don't play with that one on so much uh, initially. You're probably going to have it anyway on a Siwa class world. You don't have to promote that. But um, it's not important in the game, to be honest. It can, it can make your initial games uh, a little bit more complex, having a, like having too much alien life around you. You then, have to, you then not only have to deal with the other factions around you, but then have to deal with all these different sort of wandering beasts that could be, you know, they could be like 20 meters tall for you. No, so let's just leave that one off. We'll go continue. Now for the setup of the game, this is how I'm suggesting that you actually play your first few games. Uh, quick planet generation just means that we don't have to go through the whole planet generation. You could do the detailed planet generation if you wanted to sort of see how the game constructs a planet, but in this case, we'll just rattle straight through to the end. Uh, now, the fog of war, you can actually have it so that you can't see anything until you actually reach it, um, or you can basically have, in this case, it won't impact us with the colonization because it's a, a phase of the planet generation. Knowing the map otherwise complete, I quite like this one personally, where you can sort of see the whole map, but you don't, you still don't actually have a real good indication of what's around you and partial is going to make just make that a little bit more strong i would go with either one of these bottom two as, as if you're a new player uh, in fact let's do partial i think let's yeah i think that that will be fine that will still there'll still be things hidden we still have to find things it you know it won't be completely open to us but we will have a better picture as to what's what's on the actual planet itself so this is probably a bit of an easier way to sort of get into the game um one player city state start is fine and two armies per zone just gives you something to play with so it gives you a um it just gives you a uh, like some armies to move around right from t from turn one rather than having to build them up. So I think that that's a, a nice way to start the game. Uh, by all means, again, if you just chop and ch chop and change this depending on what you actually want to be doing. Now I've turned off all of the story modules. I think that they're just going to get in your way. So uh, let's just keep them out of the picture for now. Uh, it's just going to be more stuff for us to then talk about, and I, don't, I want to keep this one pretty much as short as I can. I know it's going to be a long video, but I, I, that will then just get in the way and, and make it a bit more complex for us to sort of go and do that one there. Uh, now, as far as development technology levels, I would strongly suggest that you bypass tech level three, which is the default, and go straight to tech level four. And the reason for that is the is because tech level three doesn't have uh, energy generation through solar panels, or it didn't the last time I looked. And so that's something that I wish it was there because it's, it's really a basic building block. It means that you have to then know that that's not there and then go and research it. Uh, so if you just turn on tech level four, you do end up getting that one. And so you can make sort of mistakes really and just let you know it'll it'll then just sort of um it'll muddle its way through so let's just leave that where that is um now the and because i do want to play this where we're doing minimal interaction with stuff that's that's uh, for min maxing and um and really just have fun with the actual game itself uh development speed normal is fine now i ha also hummed and hard about this one here either the only su the supreme command council does ease you into the game just with, with different concepts, but you've still got to make decisions. So I think the basic four councils, let's just go with those. That way we can talk about what they are, what the impact is, and then you know other things we may have a look at a little bit later on. Uh, the difficulty level, we're just going to go with beginner. Uh, definitely don't go beyond that if this is your first game or if you've been sort of struggling getting into the game. Uh, beginner is not beginner like most other games. It's not like a uh, you know, here's your dummy and your, and your pram, and let's go for a wander around the around the block. This is uh, this is still actually fairly, you know, it's fairly robust beginner. It's it still give you a bit of a run for the money. It's it's not a it's not a simple game. The AI still plays like the AI. They just have sort of like less advantages than you know some of the other other uh, other ways of sort of playing the game. Uh, and the game variants, I'm just going to keep these turned off. 
if you really dislike the logistics system, and I know that there are some people who get the game and actually don't like the logistics system, but for me, it's a big part of the game, so I'm going to, I'm going to keep it on. But you can double your logistics run by, uh, by, by having that one turned on. So let's, but let's leave it off for this particular run. So we'll just go continue. It's now going to generate the planet. It's going to colonize the planet, and then it's going to have a war at the back end of, the, of this whole thing, which is the, the whole story, that dissolution war. Now, the thing we're going to be looking at through here is predominantly mountains. If there's any mountains over here, that's going to be an issue for us. And so in this case, there's no mountains, which means it's going to be very, very open, which means that we're going to be able to... Now, there will still be mountains. You can sort of see there's hills in through here, for example. But Overall, this is actually going to be a fairly easy planet for us to, to walk around. Now, I want to have some mountains because I want to talk about the different terrains at some point. So I'm going to re-roll. But th in, this, in this instance, this would be a, an ideal first planet. In fact, in fact, just the lack of mountains. Just do another re-roll. And of course, you also want to have some water at least. Doesn't matter how much, as long as there is some indication of oceans. They're the two things, really. We've been, we, that's the only criteria we're going to have at this start. Uh, anything under 20% is fine. We've got some water in through there. This will be fine. Um, so we'll just go OK. And so we'll just start the game. Um, and then we'll sort of deal with it for there. They're the only two things you need to look at. <laughs> the rest of it, we can sort of make our way through. I'm just going to leave this where this is. Also, because we're looking at this more as a role play game, let's just play randomly a little bit. So we're just going to go, OK, I'm just going to choose B, whatever B is, because these do randomize a little bit. I'm going to choose B for everything else that goes through here. So we're going to have government, we're going to have mind, and we're going to have autocracy. And the thing is that those profiles are sort of like next level stuff that, you that yeah, they're very important in the game, but they're not critical. So we can play without even worrying about them. So we can just, we'll just muddle our way through. It will present different different scenarios and we'll just have to have to deal with them at the time in a role play uh, way not with a min max uh, gameplay way so we'll just get started you'll have a, some different uh, intro messages so i'll just skip past these you'll have one that will then sort of give you like your initial um initial cards and so we've got like a robot that we could bring in if we wanted to sort of bring in a a, uh, a robot we've got a few other different bits and bits and pieces uh, it tends to be anything like uh well, actually, I'll get this in, into the game. This is a good one for us to sort of build straight away. It's going to help our, our city. Um, again, if you forget to do it, it doesn't really matter. All right, this is an interesting start. It looks like we started in the desert. So the first thing I'm going to do is not worry about what these messages are. I'm just going to go and click on the decision tree and then, and then go back into here. Wow, okay, this is going to be fun. Uh, or is it? <laughs> Let's just dismiss this initially. Uh, we've started off in a desert. This may be too difficult, there's, and there's dangers in the zones. I'll talk a little bit about that as well. So let's have a bit of a look. We'll just scroll out and have a look. Is there water nearby? And you know, there's actually not. If you have this start, start again. In fact, I'll, taking that advice, I will start again. Yeah, I look at those planets and, th and see fun because I, I see that there's going to be a puzzle to be solved. <laughs> <laughs> but this is not what this video is about. So I look at that previous planet and think, oh, yeah, I want to play this one because it's going to be a, a problem for us to get over. Under 20%, some water, start the game. Let's see where we end up this time. And I'll just show you what we're looking for. So Ergo Peak, we'll go with C, whatever C is this time. Just going to click there. So this is Commerce, Heart, and Autocracy. Again, we're not going to worry about that. We'll, like if you're interested in it, you'll be able to find out more about that one later on. Start the turn. Click, click, click. Got some more robots. Got another fat merchant. In fact, that's the same kit that we had there before. All right, so let's now, again, just close that one off. And um, now I think that your game will tend to start with those off on the side. So I'll just try to get it back to sort of what you would predominantly be seeing. You may have this one in the middle here turned on, I think. So I think that's the default start. Now this one as well, um, so welcome to command, congratulations. Uh, we'll just dismiss that one. And if we just zoom back out again, we do have water nearby. Uh, we don't actually have any water though in our system. Like, so we actually do have problems, but you can see there that we don't have very far to go to actually get access to water. So there's nice, there's not water closely in here. This will probably be a good one for us. It's very, very open. Like we've got this sort of like brassy plains by the looks of things. We've got light forest running in through this side, a hill there, a, um, 
We've got a town that's sort of right over through here, like another minor a, a minor uh, village back in the, through that location. And then there's a couple more down this way. There's a major faction back over this way, so we can sort of see where the majors actually are. That's not that far away. So we sort of have a bit of a look around to see sort of where things actually are. So we've got a major faction there. Where else have we got major factions? It's nice in here actually to be sort of in amongst these choke points. Not sure where the other major faction is. I'm not even sure how many major factions there are. So um, we didn't have, I didn't have a good look at that one at the start of the actual game itself. So this is this is doable for us. All we have to do is just get access to here, and then we're we're okay. And so we can pretty much do that in the first turn. In fact, um, I'll do that run right now. We'll just go and get this unit and just move it down. Now, when you're moving towards the borders. Like you'll sort of see where the game wants to sort of track you through and it uses action points but we'll just move it into this location just by right clicking and the border pushed away this is an important concept a lot of players actually get frustrated with the game stumbling into units that they didn't know were there and so it's I, because the border pushed away i know that there's no enemy units there so i can now move into there and this has now opened up this coastline that's all we needed that's all we need to sort of uh, get started with water now water can come of three different ways the minimal way of getting water is through rainfall now if i just go and click on any of these tabs in through here we can see that there's only six rainfall in through here which is very very minor this one's only seven Seven, that one's six. So there's, it's very, very dry. There's 90 up the top there. Um, there's, there's more rain at the, at, on the pole. We happen to be on the North Pole of this particular planet. There's more rain up around here than what there is elsewhere. But quite often you'll end up with hundreds and hundreds of rain. But you don't get much water from that. In fact, at the start of the game, that's what we actually had. That was our, like our main natural source of water. The next source of water is rivers, and I can't see any rivers. Sorry, my dog's barking over some, about something. Um, the rivers will tend to come from mountains. Yeah, I can't see any rivers on this on this planet, but quite often there'll be rivers. Oh, there we go. There's a river net network. Now, rivers will sort of run from small rivers through to larger rivers. There's a, a, a large river there. The thicker the river and the more access to rivers, the more water you'll then get into your location. There's the other major. Another, another one down there. Actually, a lot of rivers. Oh, look at the river systems in here. Like massive river systems now running through this particular area. So... They're all good sources of water, but the biggest source of water is the actual um, is to have access to um, the actual oceans. And so in this case, all we need to do is just have our border hit these water sources and then we're going to have water coming in. Now, in our first turn, we wouldn't have had access to that. So we can sort of see what happened in our first turn. So if you come across to here, this is a really important tab. We probably won't even look at these other tabs in this in this video. Uh, this is our, our basic resources. So click on that first one there, which is the inventory bar. And so this is the inventory going through our first SHQ. SHQ is Supreme Headquarters. And we only need one of them. Don't feel you need to get m multiple of these. <laughs> just have one. Um, you don't, like you can play, you can win the whole game with just one of them. And it's it just gets confusing if you end up with more than one. So I'm just trying to think of the sorts of things that, that um, new players will tend to do. They'll tend to be looking for uh, doing that, for example, and I'll talk a lot about what you actually do have with these different things as, as well. Like, there's a few things that the new players think, okay, well, I need to, um, I need to get as many of these headquarter units out there, and I need to get as many uh, colonies set up as I possibly can. <laughs> no, you don't need that at all. It's just going to get in your way. It's going to make life very, very difficult for you. So we're not going to do that at all. Uh, so anyway, we'll just sort of scroll back up again in through here. Now, what we can see through here is if you see any red down arrows, it means that they're going backwards, that particular inventory. And always, if you can remember, when you're playing the game, at, before you sort of start to end a turn or do anything like that, just have a glance over. Is there any problems over here? Because this will then tell you pretty much at a glance if there's an issue. And so in, in, particularly if you start to see drop downs with different things, Particularly your food, uh, food we don't want to be running out of, of course. Uh, so that's they're the sorts of little warning signs. If you can get them early, it's going to save you a lot of headaches in the game. Uh, this one here, we can look at water. You can see that as an asterisk. Now, the asterisk means that we've actually got our full storage. You'll see it in the bottom of that drop-down list. It says maximum storage of uh, 4,946, and that happens to be the amount of water that we have stored. So... We were going at maximum water anyway, just off rainfall uh, by the looks of things. In fact, you can see there about halfway down, it's got delivered from zones. Now, this means that this is the water 
that's come into your your supreme headquarters. And so we had started the started the um, the round with like two thousand three hundred, and we we actually had brought in another three thousand two hundred just from the from the, from the zone delivery. If that number there is higher than the loss due to max store, actually no, not 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 to the one. Where are we? Where is it? Um, there should be one that goes out. There will be a. a um, there will be it will be used within the actual, and I don't want to go into the more confusing tabs with this, but essentially it, it's used by things like farms and things like this. If we don't have a farm, then then we will have a farm. We've got to have a farm somewhere, so the, the, a farm will use that up. So that's actually what's going to be happening in through there. So it's um, and it won't use much, but we've got more than enough. Now we also have another income that we source that we have is this this uh, when we see this little drop of water with something built on it like this. This is a uh, an ice mine. We don't need that because we've now got access to you know free access to water. Why do we want to be running this little operation in here if we've got that? Let's just deal with that one right now. So when we click on a on an area like this, uh, this particular area, if we go down and, and click on the assets tab back in through that side through there. We then see all the assets in the zone because we've got this thing selected over through here. So all assets in the selected zone are shown. We want to just click on this one here, only assets in the selected hex are shown. So we'll just do that one there. That way we just highlight, okay, this is an ice mine. It's generating 972 water. We don't need that. Like if we if we look at that number that's coming in, if we took a thousand off the of the amount that was coming in, we've still essentially got two thousand five hundred coming in just off natural means. And now that we've actually got the uh, the water access, uh, we don't need this at all. So in this case, we can just get rid of this thing. And so we're just going to close this thing down. The difference between mothball and close is that if you think you may need something in the future, you can leave a skeleton crew to maintain it. Otherwise, you just close it down. It'll go into disrepair. And after a certain number of turns, it will then disappear from the map. So we're going to close that one down. We don't want to be used to having our workers. We've got 1,100 workers and we're using 20 energy to run this particular ice mine. We don't need that, so we'll get rid of that one entirely. So there we are. That's the basics of um, of the inventory, I guess. You know, having a bit of a look at that one and water management. Water management is something that you do want to look at in your first turn or first couple of turns. Have a bit of a plan to how to how to get it, and then after that, you don't have to think about it. <laughs> so that's it. That's it for the game. We have done water management, unless things get. You know, unless we get sort of cut off from water, but uh, we hope to get, you know, we should end up with more water over here as well. So, and it doesn't matter how far the water has to go through, it will, it, as long as the border reaches the water, it's not a problem. Some of the other assets, they do have to be within a certain range, but in this case, that's not the case. All right, while we're talking about assets and mines and so on and so forth, let's have a bit of a look and see what we've actually got and what we need to be looking at uh, for other things in the actual game itself. Like if we start clicking on different things with this assets tab selected, like if I go down to here, this is a little free folk town. See how this is a really dark green? This means that no one's controlling this. This is like free, free, um, these are free folk, essentially. They're just a, it's a little town of people who have decided to live away from any of this other big, bigger civilizations. But they're a source of income for us. They, they can actually go and join us. So if we make our city more attractive for the, to them, they will then come and join us uh, over time. So this is a, a, a good, it's good having these in your, in your locations. And if we find one, like we took one that was over under here, uh, when we sort of were coming through to grab this one, and I'll show you how to look at this in just a minute. There's a good chance we're going to pick up some loot from there next turn because we actually went there for that for the first time. Uh, if there's any others that are close by, we can then sort of try to get those as well, uh, which, would be, which would be good. So there's ruins there. That's nothing much in through that side. But there's a few of them back in through here. So that's the um, that's the free farms, for the free towns. Uh, back over through here, we've got a, a little, and these will all have little villagey type names. Uh, every every square, every hex that we see through here. Is uh, is a little bit um, like it's basically about three hundred kilometers across, so it's it's quite substantial distances. Uh, if we go to Zontet, for example, we can see that there's two things in here. We have a free folk town under here as well, so there's actually nearly ten thousand people living in, in that location. But it's also got an agricultural two aspect, which is where we're making six hundred and forty eight food from this location. It does require two thousand water to operate. That's okay at this stage. It seems to be sort of doing it okay. Again, 
we're not going to have any trouble with water now that we've actually got access to water. That's, this will not be an issue. And so this is a uh, this is an agricultural area. I can actually go and click on it. It will then bring up what this thing actually is and give us give me more details. So if you do want to read more about what it's doing, it will then sort of show it. But the important thing with that one is is that it's generating 648 food, and if we hover over food, we should see somewhere in through there that there will be a. Um, like we're still we're delivering from the zones of 584 so some of that food is being used elsewhere uh, but and then we're just sending out nearly 200 of that to the different army units around the place so the as long as this number here is is positive it means that this is doing its job if this starts to go under then we need to start to look at getting another farm now a few little things we can tell from this farm like this is actually a um, this is a, a a regular earth farm and so it creates um, it creates fields around it over time and that will terraform the planet underneath it and we can see through here that there's farms all the way around here so why are there farms around here but not around here this is because this will eventually build more farms out this way this is probably sort of considered to be fairly fairly recent if we go and actually, I might just set up the, the uh, few little things before we start to talk much about this. The the units get in your way, for example. It's a little bit hard to tell where the hexes actually are on the game itself. So let's go to the middle tab over this side. This is the map layers bar. And we're going to turn a few things on by default, just so we can sort of see them all the way through the game. So we're going to turn on, the, this is divided into logistics and map layers. Let's start with the map layers. We can hide units so we can see what's underneath here. So we can see that we've got, for example, we've got like a metal mine back over through here. We've got an oil mine. There's a source of, of rare metals back at that location. There's a source of metals back up this location as well. There may be other things that we don't quite see. There's that town that we were looking at before. Now, this is the number one key. So you can just use the number number one key to turn them on or off. That's probably the most handy of the, um, of the keyboard shortcuts. Just remember, number one. And all of these things relate to um, to the actual to those those number numbers. So number two would be to hide labels. So we then hide all, hide all of the actual town labels. Now to be to be like to be brutally honest, most of these things once you turn them on or off, other than that first hide units one, you're never going to turn them back on again, like back off again, like once they're turned on. So. I tend not to worry, like once they're on, they're on. So I don't know, they don't think they actually warrant having a, um, a shortcut key. The ones we're going to have a look at is going to be the show grid, because that's going to then at least let us see what's going on in terms of the actual scale of the game. Uh, we're going to show color, which will then just tint the, uh, the outside areas. It's not really that important, but it does sort of tint the outside areas a little bit. If I turn that one off, it, we don't get to see any difference in there, there in the color. So let's just turn it on. That will then tint the, the whatever color the faction actually is. So it, will, it will then sort of color the area that we actually have. And finally, the most important one out of these is to then show the operational logistics area. Now, if I click on this one here, what this will do is it'll, it'll color the map, color the overlay, um, different shades. Now, we're not going to see it here just yet, but pretty much we've got full supply everywhere. Now, forest and mountains will sort of make the supply more difficult to get through, but eventually we'll see as we play the game that the, the logistics away from the roads will become non-green, and so and it'll eventually run out, and that's, that's where we have to be more careful. So I would suggest having that one turned on by default. Uh, so those three always on by default. And the other one I'd suggest that you turn on by default and leave it on is under your logistics. Just go with current points and just see what logistical points you actually have left. So this is sort of like your road network. You do want hundreds. If this drops under a couple of hundred, then you'll be wanting to look at, at ways of, of making it work better. And I will go through, there is some min-maxing you can do with that. And I think I do have to explain that to you just so you get the most out of your... Um, out of your road network. In fact, we might just do that one now, now that we're talking about logistics. So let's just get things set up and then we don't have to really worry about it. And then but you can just sort of deal with it as required. So for example, there's um, there's a farm in through here. We don't need a we don't need 542 logistics going into that farm. We just don't need it. Um, the farm, if we go and click on the farm, and we'll then sort of see that it's um, the asset needs 200 logistical points, but 542 were present. So this is a waste. It's a waste of our logistical network. So it's 
it's coming off this road at that location. Uh, another thing we will do back over here, we'll talk about the other different areas. We actually have like orders bar, which is the orders we give to unit zones and SHQs. And then we actually have a, um, a, a map order mode, which is uh, um, so the same as right clicking on the map, gives you access to change the order mode for map unit, clicking on the, the, the that you're currently using. If we go into here, for example, there's different things like this is our move or inspect. These are actually very useful uh, keyboard commands as well. So the I key will then just mean that we're not we don't can't accidentally move, so it's probably a good idea to just have the I key selected a lot for inspect, and then press M when you want to move your units. Like I can't, I don't have access to moving these units if I don't actually have the move command selected. So we'll talk about that in just a minute. The ones that we want to have a look at down through here, though, we can construct roads. We don't need to in this instance. Uh, we can go to traffic signs, and what this one does is it tells the logistics network. Okay, don't, you know, like, let's not send, like, we'll just send 200 out there. But it's it's not it's not easy to do that. There is an easy way to do it, and I'll show you the easy way, but I'll just go through and click on traffic signs. This is the hex that we want to change. So I just click it once, click it twice, and so that then brings up this traffic sign thing. And this looks fairly daunting. Now, we know that this is the road that's going off, and we don't know exactly how much is going off in that in that location. So if we go and uh, say, okay, well, it's probably going to be around about 30%. Let's just say that we're going to let 40% of that through. If I do that, it's going to then allow 40% of what we had there coming back through. If we go back and um, and just go back, for example, and we'll just have a bit of a look at what that would then do in the, in the next turn. If I go back to my orders here, instead of having current points, if I go to preview for the next turn points, we can then see that we've got still got 382 coming back into that location with that change. By the way, this is actually, maybe this is the better way to actually have things turned on a little bit with the logistics. Um, because what this will then do, to a degree anyway, have a look at this one every so often, where you see this number, this is like the, this is what it expects to have in terms of like this one's going to draw 100 that one's actually okay where it is, um, you know, going through there. We're not going to draw anything there because we've closed that one down. So as we have different things coming through, I'll just press number one key again. 125 is being drawn in through there. So we can sort of see what the numbers actually are. And so by putting that traffic signal there, if I go to say 60% and go back, uh, it's now got 283. But this is micromanagement and we're not going to be playing micromanagement. So what we do instead is we forget about all that. We just leave them on none. But we're going to have, we're going to block everything on that road so nothing will get through, other than what the the actual units or the or the assets will pull. So it's going to be pulling two hundred. So that's what it wants to pull. So we let the pull points through. We're only going to, only going to affect the um, the normal truck and rail. So and we're going to block all of that. So block all, but let the pull points through. So we just go back. And now we see 200 goes there, all right? So it's similarly up through here, we, we've got 770 going along this little road. We don't need that. We go into this location, we undo the pull points, and we block everything going up that way. We just go back in again, and we see now we've got 125 ending up along that road. We've still got 200 through here. We're getting thousands and, or hundreds and thousands coming back through this side. This one here, we only need 100. We've got 588. So let's just go into this one. Pull points, or this is why logistics is not dramatic if you just know, undo the pull points and then just block everything from the roads that you're not going to be sort of needing to have lots of numbers. Now, areas that we may be attacking would be great to actually just make sure that we've got nearly a thousand points ending up at these locations. So that's actually what we're going to end up having in our current, in, in our next turn. If we just go back to current points, we've still got more than what we've required there in our first turn. But next turn, we're going to have heaps and heaps of logistics along the road in the areas that we want it. I hope that makes sense. I've tried to just really keep it very, very simple. Really, in reality, that's pretty much all I ever do anyway. Even if I'm min-maxing the game, that's that's my approach. <laughs> just undo the pull points, let the pull points through, and block in anything that you really don't need to be pushing your your uh, armies along. Like so, I sort of think, okay, will will, I, will my armies come along this road? Absolutely, they will. Will they come along this road? Yes, they will. Uh, so let's let's keep that open, but then we'll block everything else. Now I can block the whole city off 
and then just the pull points will be whatever the army is. But that's not really good enough. We do want to have a lot of a lot going through where our armies will actually end up going. So that's sort of that's talking a little bit about that one through there. All right. So that's now got our logistics sort of uh, spoken about. Let's just go back and um, if we go back to this map mode, we can then just deselect or just click on the, on the uh, inspect again, just so we don't actually open that one up. So that's got the uh, that's got at least that now sorted out as far as logistics is concerned. This is all still just turn number one. Uh, now, the other map nodes that we have, we've got a few other little things that we want to do through here. If we go back up to the top, this is our basic orders. And so we can do different things. For example, underneath here, we, we did see that there were, if, if I just turn on, L, L is the keyboard shortcut to turn that on or off. I do use that keyboard shortcut a fair bit just to sort of see the actual map. We do have rare metals there. This is a great source of income. So we can actually sell these to traders. And so I think what we'll do is we'll build a mine there as, as probably the first thing that we build. Um, and that way, at least we can sort of get started. And this will also then present a problem. And so I'll show you uh, what happens when you do things wrong. <laughs> so I'm just going to go to this little symbol, uh, this little area here, this hex. We're going to go to construct. So we want to construct a, uh, a an asset at this location. You can see there that we can actually build Xeno agricultural facilities at this location. We can build um, agricultural facilities and, and agricultural dome facilities as well if we wanted to. I'll talk about this as well uh, as to what to choose at your different locations. Actually, maybe we'll do that now because we might as well get all this stuff out of the way. If you need to build a farm, if, if our farming was sort of failing, and it's not, so we don't have to do it, but if we were... Where do we know it would be the best possible place for us to do this? And I'll just go through and show you how to how to find this one out. So, um, so what we need to do is we need to find a, a temperature range where it's it's comfortable for us to build uh, farming on that planet. Now, a, a bit of a giveaway is to have a bit of a look around on the map and see. Okay, well, there's obviously farms work there. Obviously, there's a farm in Erg Peak. If I go back into Erg Peak, by the way, just so that you're aware. Anything that's grey like this means that it's state run, which means that you control it. Anything that's got this sort of like this brownish sort of shape to it is is privately run. So we actually do have a big farm in here as well that generates a lot of food. This is a, this is a three level farm, and this is the one that's creating all of these different farms farmlands around Erg Peak. So Erg Peak is surrounded by farms that are built from this particular one farm. So that, that's just extending out hundreds of kilometers away from the from the uh, from the town to then generate the food that this thing is actually generating. Now we also get 178 food from this particular grouping as well. So we get some food from the private sector. We get some money from the private sector as well. So this is the private sector. There's two tabs of different things on this location. We've got a police station, we've got a uh, school, and we've got a farm privately run, and we've got a bureaucratic office We've got a recycling plant, an industry back and through here, a high command and a truck station. You'll always have at least a truck station and a farm somewhere usually, uh, along with one or two other other mines around the place, usually with a, an ice mine. But on a Siebel world, you very, very rarely need those ice mines. We've already spoken about how to evaluate that. Okay, so that's sort of what we're finding at sort of back in, in Erg Peak. That's why all these farmlands are around here, because of this big this big privately run farm. Again, I can just double click it. This is a private farm, so it's a different sort of setup that we see from here before. These also do need to have um, some sort of uh, upkeep in terms of their, uh, like they need to also have pull points coming through, so they still require it. It's not showing us there actually, what the actual amounts are. I mean, it's right in, in their capital, so it's not gonna really matter that much. So building, um, we can either build in the city or we can build outside the city. Let's go and, and go to this location and look to build. Uh, sorry, we're going to look at farming, weren't we? So this one, this one here, we can think, okay, well, this farming looks to be pretty damn good. And we've got another farm over here, which it wouldn't have been built there unless that was also in a, in a good position. And the game really does model like planets in terms of the um, in, in terms of the like the temperate type zones. It may be too too hot, for example, to to build a farm down around here somewhere. Like if we if we seeing any farms? No, we're not. We're seeing deserts over here, for example. So if I go and click over through this side, we can see that the temperature here is 37 degrees. Up through here, it's at 35 degrees. Up through here, it's at 26 degrees. Up through here, it's at 18 degrees. Right on the uh, on the top of the map, it's at 11 degrees. And so, and it does have seasons as well. And you've got to take these things into account when you actually are looking at the, at the game. So, 
there's there'll be there'll be a, a temperature range that is ideal. Now, if I go and, and start to try to build a um, a farm up through there, you can see there that this one here won't let me build a Terran farm because it's too arid to have open farming at that location. So I can't build there. So it's actually it's not letting me do it. But if I go back down around here somewhere and say, okay, well, what about here? Can we build a can we construct a farm here? Yes, we can, because there's enough rainfall. So there's 17 rainfall there. There's uh, four rainfall there. So we can't build the Terran farms back at that location. The um, so that's actually just it's interesting to sort of see how the game does do that. I don't know if, if we go back down into here. This is 33 degrees. Probably still going to be able to technically build a Terran farm there. Actually, you know, this is too arid for open farming, even though we're right on the water. Um, so what's going on? How's this farming sort of then working? Uh, what, what we can do here is just go up to our reports. Reports is a really, really useful tab. And I, I won't go through into too much detail, but have a read around when you're in here. We'll just go and click on it. We'll come back to this dashboard. This is incredibly useful, incredibly useful. In fact, I was even thinking about starting here and then sort of moving through into the rest of the game. But you've got other helpers as well. So if we go across to the help file at the back end of this, um, you've got different things at the very top here. You've got like the planet statistics overview, which gives you a bit of a rundown as to what was generated for the actual planet itself, like the different levels of the, the hazards, the biohazards. You can see the alien nutritional toxicity. It's got medium incompatibility. So it's not great for us to, to build Xeno farms. Like it's not perfect. So if it, if it was zero, it'd be absolutely perfect. So we could then build them, but we have the option because it's le it's less than four. So it's medium incompatibility. It's not not pleasant to eat. <laughs> but we may live on a we may be on a planet at some point where where Terran farming is is not suitable. But but Zeno you know level level two Zeno farming is, and so that may be why you would do it. So in this planet, we would never ever build a Zeno farm when we can build a Terran farm. But there may be a reason for it still. So we'll have a bit of a look at that when they're through there. So we can sort of then sort of have a look through the rain scarcity is zero. So rainfall is regular. Oxygen scarcity, oxygen at Terran levels are higher. So this is this is all perfect for us. Uh, this is why with there's no biohazards, no respiratory hazards, everything is, is absolutely perfect. And so overall, the planet itself is pretty good. Uh, we go to the agricultural drop uh, crop details next and through here. This one has now split itself up into Terran crops and Xenobiological crops. And the differences here that we can sort of see is that the um, the Xenobiological crops, the, the, the native crops are going to have a w broader range of, uh, of what it will accept. You can sort of see through here, the lowest ideal temperature will be 10 degrees and the highest, um, the, the highest, uh, sorry, the, the, the maximum lowest temperature is, is one degrees and the maximum highest temperature is 80 degrees. So this can sort of operate in very extreme temperature ranges. The ideal temperature for this one is 25 degrees, whereas for the Terran crops, it really, the ideals are, well, the ideals for here are between 10 and 40. Our ideals for Terran crops are between 10 and 30. So around the 20 is the absolute pick of the pick of the bunch, like this is what we actually do want. Uh, and so that's something we do want to be looking at, but there's seasons in the game. And so the seasons may impact what we do as well. And so if we have a bit of a look at this one, um, you can see it's saying winter. Now, this is always is north uh, north hemisphere centric. Even if you start in the southern hemisphere, it will still say whatever the northern hemisphere is experiencing. So we're starting off in winter, which means that this is the coldest that we're likely to sort of see. So how do we find out what we're likely to find around where we are? Now, when we were looking at the different temperatures, we we're getting about 20 degrees around this sort of latitude in through this side. If we go down to we've got planetology, this is all the, the things that the game had set up when when it had when it was creating what it was doing uh, it's got practically no tilt so there's going to be very limited it's not going to actually have very many seasons in fact you can see through here the difference between winter spring summer and fall is one or two degrees so this is the uh, this is the arctic the tropic and the antarctic and so it's very hot all the time around the, the around the equator and it's so the temperature because of the lack of of tilt means that there's hardly any temperature difference. So really, wherever we wherever we build around the 20 degree, it's not gonna change much. So we've got like a fair bit of latitude to, to build fairly well, like this one here, temperature 18, 15, this is all fine. As long as we've got the rainfall, then you know we can sort of do what we want. 
15 and through here. So we're looking for anywhere between uh, 10 and, and 30. So we're getting up to 26s back in through this side. So it's a fairly hot planet. Uh, you know, there's not, like this one here was probably right on the limits as to where it could actually be. 24 is actually not too bad. 26, 29. But you won't see much beyond this range here. Like, you know, there won't be any more Terran farming below that way. But there may be down in the southern, yeah, here we go. So this, this area down here, again, ideal for farming. So that, that uh, particular location there is, is, has got big farms around it. Right, so that's actually how we then choose if we are going to be able to building a farm. There's, there's a little helpers for that one. I'll just go back to the overview and we'll come back to that one in just a minute. So the next thing we want to be looking at is building. So we're just going to go and construct this, this mining operation in here. So we go to construct, and again, we got off the tangent here because we looked at the three different sorts of things we could build. At least you've got now a bit of a feel as to how or why you would build that one. But if you've got Terran farming, I would probably, as a rule of thumb, just stick away from Xeno you know, agricultural facilities anyway. Just like, you know, it's it, there can be a reason to do it, but that's a more of a min-max reason. Either go with your uh, open-air farming or your dome farm. In a lot of planets that aren't friendly, you'll have to have a dome farm, which will then chew up um, a lot of the um, energy you'll start to sort of sink energy into it they also like the the farms do take a lot of workers as well but anyway that's the farming so mining is what we can do here we can be, we're on top of a rare metals location we can mine this one and it's going to then cost us 75 to, oh, sorry, sorry, it's not going to cost 75 it's going to cost us 20 energy and, and 1100 workers and it's going to then generate 75 raw, raw metals. And to construct it, it's going to take two rounds. And each round, it's going to require one machine, uh, 1,000 workers, 125 metal, and 125 industrial points. And if we look across over this other side, we don't see the workers. They come from the city. But um, over this other side, we can see that there's metal there. We've got 400-odd metal. That's enough. Uh, we've got 125, it's more, it's, we've got just enough of the industrial points there as well. And when we go down to machines, we don't have zero, so we're not going to be able to build this. But let's just start the process so you can see what happens if you do it wrong. So we're going to start to construct this one. And um, by the way, there's other things we can build as well. So I might talk about that as well. Like we can build the solar panel fields, which I spoke about before, to generate more if we do need it. But it's, at this point in time, we're doing fine. You can see over the side industry over through here these can only be built in city hexes the government buildings can only be built in city hexes as well and the logistics is um, basically can be a lot of these can be built anywhere but some of them have to be built inside city hexes as well but the one that we really really want here is to have um is to have the the rare metals mine so we'll start construction right. So it's now being queued up for, for, you know, in between the turns to say, all right, get started on the construction. By the start of the next turn, we want to have that one halfway built because it's a two-turn construction job. So that will be, that will be the order that it's being, going to be given. Um, we can also, like, nothing comes off this. So just be, just be aware that you don't, really, you don't want to be building too many different things. But while we're talking about buildings, let's just go and talk a little bit about the most important aspect of the game. This is the most important thing to actually sort of take on board. Uh, and it all comes down to, if we go back to our reports and through here, this is the Empire dashboard. All of your important stats are right here where you can sort of see it. These are your different councils, which we'll talk about in, 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 a, in just a minute. But these are the important stuff that you're going to sort of then go and see. So you don't see any, any of your resources. The resources are sort of secondary to, to what's really important in the game. You've got a few little things at the top here as well. You've got fate points, which we'll spend in just a minute. Uh, these come rarely, so don't, you know, like... You, you're going to need to spend them wisely. You have political points. These are sort of allow you to then play cards. So this is how you sort of there's certain certain decisions you'll make that will take uh, that will cost political points. So you need to actually generate those. And uh, you've got your money as well. And you don't want to be running out of money. Now we'll see this happen over time. In fact, what we might do is let's just end our turn, and I'll come back to that screen. So we, because at the moment there's no, nothing meaningful happening in there. So we've still got our four decisions. We'll just go through. Rule of thumb, if you're playing this one, I would just go and say, okay, look, if um, whatever makes the most people happy, just choose that. So we'll just go and allow this one, no matter what the request actually is. Done. Okay, that one's been done. This will often chew up political points, some of these, at different times. This one here, the Ascension speech. This, this one here hates that decision. 
<laughs> but this one here, the heart of Merciless, he's happy enough to go along with that one. So let's just go and do that one. Again, that's our rule of thumb. And this one will cost us one of our political points. Affirmative. By all means, read it and have a bit of a bit of a look at it. So we're down to 15 now. Now we have two different organization decisions. By the way, you can skip around and just have a bit of a look and see what you want to do through here. Now, on a Siwa class planet, uh, one of the things we're going to have is, is our infantry is most likely going to be a little bit not what we want. Um, not quite, anyway. So what we can do, uh, you don't have to do anything. You can just go no new orders. If you go no new orders, it will, it will start to discover other things it can build. Um, so we can just sort of leave that off. And I might just show you where that is. If you go to the, manu uh, the management screen and then just go to, to types, it will start, if it's got no nothing to look for, it will, it will start to look for bazookas, anti-tank guns, these sorts of things. So we don't have to have, we don't have to be really sort of um, producing models all the time. But if you're playing on a Siwa class world, you are going to essentially have infantry that is not really going to be having much uh, armor on because it's a friendly environment planet. So they're more like a, I guess, a police force rather than a sort of like a, rather than a SWAT, SWAT team type sort of approach to the way that they go. It's a, like they're not they're not armored for combat. So let's get them a little bit more armored. So we've got our infantry. Um, then we'll just build upon the troopers. Min-maxing, you'd look at and do an evaluation to see if you needed a new one. We're not going to do that in this playthrough. We're just going to go with whatever we're given. So we're just going to select the troopers. Now, an asterisk will be, will be next to whatever the current weapon that it is. Now, we've got things from between half the combat firepower. We don't want to go backwards. These do cost different amounts of industrial points to produce. Like this one here and this one here, is, this one's less effective, but the actual... The actual cost, the only only saving you have here is it uses less ammo. So, uh, but we definitely want to keep the automatic rifle. And then the other thing we have is what we use now because the uh, environment is perfect. These guys are just wearing their civvies basically, or they're just their uh, they're just wearing cloth. Uh, they're wearing clothes, so they're not wearing anything. So if we go and go for full on padded enviro suits, it's going to cost us a little bit of, of metal and industrial points, but we get a hundred armor strength from that. So let's just go and do that initially, and just get those those working. So they're now going to build build up a, a different model of the uh, of the of the infantry for us now the other one we have is foreign affairs council wherever you have these different things where it's saying you know do you want to change you know do you, do you want to go more into major or minor diplomacy what these do is these generate the cards for you if you don't know um, or don't really like you, if it's something that you're thinking oh i don't know just go no changes <laughs> or confirm either one uh, in this case we're probably thinking look let's go and get more minor factions so let's ramp this up a little bit, say some up, up, up around here. So we get end up with more cards about minor factions. So we'll just go and go confirm. That's all we have to do. Don't stress it. Don't stress about it. So that's now done with our decision making. Let's now end our turn. All right, so now that we get to sort of see any other movements. Oh, I didn't move my, my forces. That was one thing I forgot to do. Yeah, there's forces moving back out into our territory. Look, if there's no assets as such, if there's no nothing like this around the place, then um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter about that one. We suffer no losses, no made any kills. We have one decision and 65 reports waiting for you. Just have a look at the series. So that one location that I mentioned before, we did actually in there, we did find five high-tech items have been secured at that location. That's why we want to get these uh, free folk towns. Um, Again, if you don't know that, you, you won't know to look for that one and it won't really matter that much. Now, advice, no machines. We have no machines stored at the first HQ. I think this is causing the, the delay of the construction of an asset, this one over here. You can, you can artisanally produce more machines uh, uh, by using the workshop order in the right side window or you can buy them from traders. By the way, Vic the developer is, uh, English is not his first language. He's, uh, he's uh, from... Um, from the Netherlands, and so um, so there are some little typos and things through the game like this. Um, but anyway, that's um, so we can either produce them or we can buy them. So let's go and let's go and have a look at both both options, just so you can sort of see where they actually are. We'll just dismiss this uh, for now. Now, when we have a look through, we can sort of see here's one of those little red arrows. Okay, so we have we can answer across here. Is our first thing. Okay, there's a red arrow. It's only we're only losing three, so that we've spent that on something we must have been spent over through here so 
if we go and click on this one here, we've got the assets selected. We can see there that actually, was there anything that went in there? Needed 125. Yep, and so 125 were actually allocated. That's where that's where that drop down would actually be, I would assume. Uh, we also then have something building in here that will be a private asset. They're building a light industry, a private light industry. If we don't have control over that, they're just going to do that themselves. That's fine. They can just go ahead and do that one. Now, the borders are being pushed back a little bit from Bastia, so we might just want to sort of get hold of that one. There's also an asset down through here, a luxury resort, which will give us another political point per turn. We're up to now 36. So how are we getting the 36 and how are we getting our money and all these sorts of different bits and pieces? I guess we should just talk a little, a little bit about that in very, very rough terms. Um, the biggest thing when we're building something, and we'll talk about that, that right now as well, it, actually, you know, first of all, let's get this thing solved. Let's just go and click inside our territory so that we've actually got this allocated. If I click outside the territory, that won't be, it's an unfriendly zone. But if I go into here, we can then go and sort of see, this is for the first SHQ, we can go to the workshop or the trade. And so these are the two areas that we're going to then do to go and get the machines. And so if we go to workshop, you can then sort of see that the um, you can either produce, produce machines, sorry, ammunition or machines. And at, the, at this point in time, I can produce two machines, which is all that I really need. Let's just go and build one of them for now. It does cost us metal, rare metal and industrial points. Now, this is actually often not the best way to do this, but sometimes, sometimes it is the best way. But in this case, it's actually not. But I'll still just do it anyway, because we're not worrying about min-maxing. So we'll produce one machine this way. Okay, there we go, that's done. And that's now gonna chew up a little bit of our rare metals, a little bit of our metals, uh, and a little bit of our industrial points. That's now gone backwards a little bit. And we now have one machine there for the next turn. So we'll, it'll at least go halfway through what it requires. If we go to trade and have a look, we can see we can buy machines as well. So we've got, uh, the, each machine's gonna cost me 77 credits and I've got 533. There's actually three machines available. So you know, buy one, buy two, buy three if you wanted to. So we've got a bit of bit of uh, cash. Just be aware that you actually need to have a reserve of cash every turn, and we'll have a look at that as well in just a second. But let's buy all three machines. That just keeps us going for the future. So we're down now to a. Um, if I just cancel out of there, we're down to three hundred cash. Is that enough cash? How long is that going to last us? Go back to your reports again. Have a look at your Empire dashboard and have a look down through here at this little area through this side. Now, I'll talk a, a lot about what all of these different things mean, but the third one down is the start turn credits was 533, and we are draining 99 credits per turn through all sorts of different expenses. So we need to have every single turn at this point in time in the game that will, that will change as we get bigger armies and other assets and things. As things are standing right now, that's going to cost me, I need to have 99. So I've got three turns worth of money left in the, in the bank right at this very particular point in time. So that's something we have to just be aware that that's, that number won't change much. So it's about 100. About 100 is what we've got to, got to aim for. So we've got three turns in through there. Now, one thing that the game doesn't really tell you, but the secret, the big, big secret to actually winning this game is to work on BPs. <laughs> and one of the weird things about this game is nowhere in the game that I've found anyway, and I've looked for it, nowhere in the game does it tell you what a BP is. Even the tooltips will say you produce 87 BP and, uh, for, and for small bureaucracy size, size, we received another 93 BP bonus. These are bureaucratic points, and this is the secret to winning the game. Your different... Uh, areas down through here, the budgets use the BP. And you can sort of see through here that the budgets are being split up amongst the different councils. The Supreme Command Council is getting 20% of the budget. The Economic Council is getting 20%. The Military Research, 20%. The Model Design Council, which we interacted with before, was getting 20%. And then the Foreign Affairs Council is getting 20%. Inside there, those the 20% that they have, so they're all getting 31 bureaucratic points from what's been generated for our turn like the next term bureaucratic points, it's going up slightly each turn. So we're sort of getting a little bit in through there. We've got like 180 odd is being split up amongst those different areas. So we're getting 31 bureaucratic points into each of these councils. The councils then split that up depending on how they're allocated. Again, we're not going to worry too much about it. But the political power 
is spending 16 of those in that, which generates our political points. That's how we get our political points. And general stratagems, these are the cards that we get. So it's splitting it up between political points and cards. This is just so that you have an understanding of why BPs are so important. And so what we want to do is the more BPs we get, the more power we have to do things. Like the Economic Council is looking for, um, is, is discovering new techs. It's researching existing techs. And um, it will ask us what tech we want to want to do. I would think if it says no research tech, uh, no research target yet, it will eventually ask us for something. I'm not going to, I'm not going to get in the way of that just yet. I'm just going to let it, 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 it warn me. Uh, normally, if you're min maxing, you would be going ahead of the game and sort of selecting that one. Uh, prospecting, it's looking for metals, it's looking for fuel, it's looking for all sorts of different things in through there. Economic policies back and through this side as well. Um, so it's looking for cards that deal with the economy. The Military Research Council, again, is looking for discovering new new military techs and it's, it's doing research, but nothing on uh, nothing just yet. If there is nothing, uh, if there is no research being done, it will then take whatever points were supposed to be allocated into there and push them into other areas. In this case, this has gone and gone, okay, well, there's no research there. Let's throw it all into discovery. We'll see if we can find some new techs. So it's 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 looking for new text. In fact, that's why it's not it's not actually working on any text because there there's nothing for it to work on yet. It has to discover them first, and so all of those points it just it just it does. You don't have to worry about it. It just does it. So let's not worry about what it's doing. And similarly, in through here, it's it's putting a lot of uh, bureaucratic points into discovering uh, different texts and through this side as well, and the models as well. Like we we now got uh, we've got the troopers are now at seventy percent that we sort of had redesigned so we're just waiting for them to come on board and that's all we're going to really be worrying about so that's the um, that's the bureaucratic points that's what the game is all about so we need to be mindful of trying to get as many bureaucratic points as we possibly can so that's actually in the bps and so let's have, go back to our building queue back in at erg peak and is there anything else we can build now we don't want to be building too many different things it's going to start to really drain our our resources by doing this if we go to erg peak and go and go back to construct and go to the government buildings, which is where all of our bureaucratic points actually are. We've got two different buildings that I can see straight away. When we see this little open book, this is a BP production per round, we can get another 40. So this is a big, big boost by just getting this high command HQ2. It's gonna cost take four rounds. There's no machines involved. It's just It's just metal and some industrial points, but it's gonna cost a lot of energy to do this. So let's just go and throw that one in there. Uh, so we'll go and grab that. Uh, down through here, we, we can't build this one yet. We're not at a high enough civilization level to get the 200, but that would be a good one for us to grab as well. So let's just go and start this upgrade of the existing HQ. Roger that. So we get that one through there. That's one of the only reasons that uh, this that you would sort of just uh, like uh, you know, flippantly go and create a new a new uh, colony would be to, to have access to the, that one building and it's not really worth it so don't think that you have to colonize in this game it's not it actually gets more in your way than than not so that was one of the only little benefits of getting more BP through doing it but it's 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 minimal so don't don't really worry too much about it now we've got one decision and we this this particular decision we can't move on because this decision is a critical one just go back into here. So this faction candidate is saying that uh, they demand that you hire their candidate. Now, it doesn't cost us anything to do this. So yeah, come on board. We'll just get them in the pool. <laughs> now, when we have options for, for putting different people into different things, I'm not going to min-max the game with that way. I'm just going to let the game sort itself out. We're not going to even look at the uh, at who we have on board. So that's got those in. We just press number one again so we can see our, our various troops. Um, everything's pretty friendly down this way. We've got two different types of troops, like we've got the first infantry and the second infantry. And if we go and click on one of these different units, like the part of the second infantry, that's going to be designated by this color. By the way, if you don't like the color, just go across with the unit selected, with the headquarters selected, go to unit admin, change the color to whatever you want. So if we want sort of like a a stronger blue we can just go okay and then update and then they'll all be blue this one here is a bit bit muted let's make this one into like an orange color for example just go to unit admin change color and we'll just go and grab it like an orange there that'll do update so that's now got these if it's probably a bit similar to our our background it doesn't doesn't cost anything to do this one this is just like a designation um actually maybe we'll go back to more of that sort of greeny sort of color just update yep so that'll be fine 
You do want to try to just keep your forces working together because the leader of this group, now when you select things, and I've still got the asset tab open here. I'm not seeing anything because there's no asset. If there was, if I click on this one here, there's a free folk area underneath there. So it can still be useful to do this, but we want to go across to the 4th Infantry and you can see through here that Bruce Jack Jackson is the commander of the 2nd Light. So he's actually at this particular unit in through here. But when I click on one of these, we can see that there's like a thousand troopers in the 2nd Infantry group back in through this side. And if we click on this one through here, we can see that this is uh, uh, Yevgen Yevgeny Raiden Knight is the commander of the 1st Machine Gun Infantry. And her groups have got, she's got like 800 troopers and 200 cycling guns, which are like a machine gun. So that's what we actually have. So let's go and send off these guys to go and take these other locations. So we just go back to, now this one, I can't move. I'm not getting any, any movement. That's because, again, we've got the, um, we're on inspect, so just press the M key. I'll just go keep it back on this on the screen. So just M, and I can now start to move. Now, if I just right click, this the border did not push back. Now that means that something is in one of these territories. And this is an important concept for you to actually understand as to why, why are we not able to move into one of those territories. Now, we're not at war with this group. We can push the border back, no problem at all. In fact, in fact if I move one of these guys into this location in here, um, you know, it'll push, it will push back that part of the border. It didn't push this part of the border back. So something is happening. And this, I know this frustrates new players uh, because they don't actually, they will just move, they'll just get this guy and say, okay, I want this unit, I want this uh, to get my political points, so I'll just move into there. And then suddenly they'll be ambushed and they'll lose half their forces. So something is stopping us from moving in there. Now, it can be all sorts of different things, but it's gonna be a unit of some type. And it could be back in here, the unit, it could be sort of keeping the border protected from there. It could be anywhere along here, really, anywhere in, the, in any of these different different zones. It's like when, when we're pushing our borders back, we get to protect the borders up until, until we get right up close to it. Then we have to push into it. Now, there's a inside the game, I'll just press the I key again, just so we're not going to accidentally stumble into anything. If we have a look at the uh, at, at the different locations, if we go into Isthar, which is the one that I wanted to actually go and grab, and go and have a look at this one. We can see there, if we click on assets, it does have this ancient luxury resort. Down in through here, there's a free folk town. Um, but when we have a look over this side, we can see other things about the actual location. We can see that it's a high temperature of 32 degrees. It's got reasonable rainfall of 186 per year. Uh, there's no scavenging on there. But the important things down through here is the recon. Now, when I hover over recon, it says the current recon in the selected hex uh, minimum recon for unit information is 40, so we need to have at least 40 to really start to sort of go and see what's going on in there. And we only have 14, so we're a long way off getting our recon for that particular location. And when we hover over there, it says it's 40 usually, but 50 for this hex. So something is in that hex that is, it is making the recon go up just a little bit. Now, with this hex selected, you can see it's Savannah back in through here is the, is the terminology that it actually uses. If I hover over that, I think anywhere, any of these, we can then see different information about the location. And so we can see there that there's like a, um, uh, where is it? Enemy train penalty, uh, yeah, that's, no, that's, sorry, that's action points. Where's the, where is the, she's not showing us there, but the Savannah has basically got another 10%, 10 actually it's none of those things in through there. This is the, I wanted to, just wanted to talk about this one soon, but not just right now. Actually, is there anything there? I thought there was still a, um, somewhere we can sort of st still see the, it's the action point cost getting in there. No, it's not, not gonna show us. If we, if we have a look, for example, it's the Savannah there that's actually uh, impacting that one there. If we click on this one down this side, we've only got four recon, and this one is also 50, so that one is also Savannah. If we go to this one over through here, that's a grassy plain. If we hover over that one, i oh, sorry, if we have a look at the recon there, we would need only 40. So when there's no vegetation in the way, it's 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 more open. So we only need 40 recon to see what's in there. We need 50 there and there. This is uh, this is like a tree in through this side through here. We've got 22 recon. And in this case, we've only got, uh, we need 70 to see what's inside that hex. So it's gonna be hard for us to see what's in there. But the more forces we bring in around this, we'll just go back to movement again. And the more I bring, uh, bring in, remember this one was 14. So let's just go back across and move this guy into here. So we've now got two in there. 
And when we have a click on this one here, we've gone up to 24 recon. So we're still not at the 50. Uh, we'll bring this one forward. That sometimes can have a bit of a bearing, but not much. Yeah, 26, so we're getting a little bit extra. We'll bring this one in as well. In fact, that one there, we now have enough strength in here to push the border back. And so we know that there's nothing in there. So the unit must be in here, really. And uh, when we have a look at the, at the recon, we're now up to 31. It's still not enough for us to see what's actually in there. Uh, so we can bring other units down. Then each unit will have its own recon ability. So I might just show you how that works. If we go to, for example, this is a militia group. It can go along the roads, but it can also head down this way as well. It can actually go into that location. I don't think that one can. That one can get into there. It's now going to have a recon of 33. Uh, so this this truck, I'll just use this as, a, as an example. This truck, if we go back to the actual what's inside it, has got different uh, militia. Now it's got uh, militia bikers and militia buggies as well, as well as artillery, trucks and all sorts of different things. And this is not controlled. I mean, we control where it goes and what it does, but it's built directly by the citizens in the, in the city. And so in this case, we can have a look at the militia buggy. We can open it up and it'll have like a recon amount. And so the recon is 15. It's very, very high. We compare that to one of our units, for example, if we just go back into one of our troopers and look what its recon is, it's only one. So we get a lot more recon by bringing this one in. In fact, even the bikers have got a recon of 10. So if we bring this truck down into here, we get to see a lot of stuff. And so it looks like there may be another unit there. So let's move this into the, into the tree line. Oh, there it is. So we actually ended up being able to take this location and we can now see that there's a group in through here. There's a rifle militia group that's standing back here that was pushing the border back. But we've now taken this location and we do actually have one unit that can still move in. So we'll do that. And that one now has also then given us enough fight, uh, push to now get Madeline as well. So we've now got this little free folk village. So that's sort of how we can, but we I didn't need to, that guy could have been in any one of those locations and to push that border back. And if he had have been in there and we didn't have the recon, we could have stumbled in and he would have then ambushed us, even though we're not at war, and it would have damaged our unit. I know that that frustrates people, but it's that recon ability. Now, if we have a look at where he is, we can see we've got recon of 60 in there and we need a recon of 50. Now, it's sort of a bit of a, a loose rule. Like sometimes you'll actually get, um, uh, like it can be a little bit lower than the 50 and still be able to sort of at least get some information. But in this case, we, we've got reasonable information because we've, we're over the 50. So we can get the, we know who it is. At some points, we, we might just end up with a, a blank square where we don't know exactly what unit it is, but we know that there is a unit exactly there. So let's move some of these more out across the different locations. We'll just move these out as well. Uh, we do actually have a small group of militia buggy so let's move them down along this road these are incredibly good as we saw there before with their uh, ability to scout so we'll just scout these ones forward again we're looking into there we're not seeing anything actually we are, now we're seeing these are the ones where we've got limited recon but we can sort of see that there are three units that we're aware of there may be more and recon is just such an important aspect of the game it really is so, so important i'll move another one of these units just down this way i think and I think what we'll do is we'll start to um, just push each of these groups down along the different roads and push the borders back a little bit. So we'll push these out. We know that there's a major player right there because the, the border's a bit different. And we'll just move them down. Just move that one down towards the, uh, towards the city. So um, that's now just got our units sort of selected. We've got all those around the place. We did start building in here, didn't we? It's, um, yeah, under construction, the high command, that's good. So we've got that one done. Um, that's looking okay over there as well. I think everything's fine. We've done our decisions. I think we're ready to go into the next, uh, next turn. So we now get to see a little bit what we can see. We'll see borders cho chopping and changing a bit. Quite often we'll see, particularly with the other mages, they'll start to expand fairly aggressively. Now, we don't know much about that particular unit just yet, so let's just go and start the turn. Just, just Okay, this is our um, our economic director has now discovered, we saw their discovery from you know investing bureaucratic points into discovery. It's discovered some more metal, which is useful. By the way, resources are finite in this game, so they do run out. 
it's got a new tech, a power plant. So this is actually allows us to then build, if we don't want to build the solar panels, we can build those. And we've now finished that model that we built, the Trooper 2. So we've now got this new, new model. And as we find new technology, we can just keep on building more and more types of units in through here as well. And we discovered also an APC if we wanted to build that. Um, so you know, we can actually go and build more some of those if we you know, replace some trucks, for example, for, for mechanized forces uh, or motorized forces. So anyway, we've got the, um, and we also picked up more cards. I haven't spoken about cards. We'll talk about them now, I think. So with the game itself, we can now see that our, our industrial points is now running backwards fairly, fairly much. We're using one machine per turn, which is happening back in through here go back with assets and have a look we can see there's one turn left so we are now using different bits and pieces in through there and we're also using metals to build the different things that we are actually building so we'll just let them go you do want to build these up a little bit our food is now maximized our water is now maximized we're getting heaps of water now because of this this little area back and through there um, now what else have we got what else have we got just right click and move that one across there's open borders here. Some, some of these will be good. You just hover over to see what they sort of benefit they are. It's not, not dramatically important for us. Uh, let's just keep on pushing back up. This is the change in supply for press number one. Um, you can sort of see it's green there. We've got full supply. We've still got some supply there, but not just not very much. So we have to be, this is where we have to be a bit more careful. Um, I'll just keep on moving down. And again, I don't want to be moving into their territory unless it pushes back like this. I don't want to just, you know, just goes straight in. I don't want to just blunder in. I would like to get, there we go. We've actually got a bit of scouting on that particular location there. We're not at war with anyone just yet. We're just pushing the borders back. And they can do the same to us as well. So we'll keep those two there. Start to move this one up and around. Just make sure it doesn't sort of leave that location. Um, we might just get this secured up through this side as well. Again, I don't want to blunder into there, but I can I can move into here if I wanted to. That's now safe. This guy has sort of gone down there. I don't want to lock him in because it's just going to make them aggressive. Now, we're going to talk about cards. Uh, do I do that yet? Maybe I'll just move these across and just get them ready. I mean, ultimately, we want to take this city either through... Um, Fair means or foul, whichever way sort of works for us. Let's just go across to here. Yeah, that's pushing more back, but this is keeping this border back in through this side. So this one will possibly come back out uh, because it's got nowhere else to go. So it's going to get cornered. The AI is fairly good in this game, by the way. So it doesn't tend to sort of get trapped too much. Um, so this group in through here, we've got like a, a, a different different group. So when I click on these things, I can sort of see what this one's got a farm and a transport hub. So some of these we'll, we'll have access to. We don't know anything about this particular unit. We don't know what that is. Um, but let's just talk a little bit about this particular group. Now, if I go to this next tab over through here, we can see that this is a um, uh, this is Deirdre Lambert, and it's a farming community. So what we could do is we could think, okay, well, look, let's let's be friends. Let's not actually um, let's let's not sort of uh, fight each other. And so if I click onto another territory, like over through here, this is not aligned forces. This is just open terrain. So we can actually just go and grab that one. No one controls that one there. But if we thought, okay, well, look, we might as well try to be friendly. So let's just go to our, our cards, our, st our, strat our stratagems. And we've got them in, uh, in, uh, sort of arranged into a whole lot of different sorts of categories. This is for the uh, diplomacy with the major players back and through this side. And so um, we can either give gifts or we can do, give an overture. So communicate a willingness to end a war. For like if we're at war, we can start to try to, to uh, get out of that one. Now this one, you can see this is a number of political points that we've spoken about before to sort of play these cards. Now the minor faction, we've got uh, things like offer protection, annexation. So these are different cards that we can sort of promote. And so we have, and this is going to be played by Martha Jones, who's in charge of our Foreign Affairs Council. So um, so we need at least one recon on the regime. So if we go and click on offer protection, so we don't have recon on this one yet, we may need to send a spy in just to get that a recon amount on the actual location. So I can't use any of these just yet, but it will tell us what we can do with them eventually. 
covert ops, we've got to send a spy. So we've got this one through here. This one's going to be done through the Supreme Command Council. If we don't have a council that's dedicated to actually look after a particular area of the of the game, and spying has got its own council, it will just the Supreme Command Council will then just do the job and roll the dice for us. This is a difficulty of 42. Now again, we've got this. Oh, hang on, this is this area here that we wanted to do. <laughs> we wanted to do Elysius. Now it, back and through here, we should actually still have. We've got very high recon around here. But there is also like a recon for the actual regime itself. Um, you can see we've got a recon of two. So this is of the actual regime. And so this is what we know of the group. So it's more than one. So we can actually go back to those cards. Sorry, I had, I had it back over here, which is not aligned forces with no recon. So we've got this, this little recon amount down in here. It's, again, we've got the regime tab selected and we're looking at recon, uh, looking at down the bottom here with, uh, with the recon down there, not the recon on the actual ground. Like we get very high recon in that location, for example. So anyway, with as long as we've got the, the cursor somewhere inside there, we go to our strat cards, we go up to the miners, and we can now start to play these. Now, um, it does say that this is invalid. Are any of these invalid? So if we hover over that one, this is a, it says we can't do it. Um, we should be able to. So it's, it's a minor regime, yes. It's not an alien native regime. Uh, we are at peace with, not executed a stratagem on this turn, does not have a protector yet, does not have a master yet, is not at war with any major regime. Uh, so the base difficulty is 100 minus the relation. So it's the minus the relation is 71. So the higher the relation... Now, in this instance, we're probably just not high enough to really sort of warrant doing this anyway. So difficulty is modified for aggression and other factors. Diplomacy role... Offer yourself as a protector. You can defend them when attacked. Maybe we don't do that one. Annexation as well is going to have like other sorts of things. Like it's going to be quite difficult to do. We're going to have to be super, super friendly with them. So the um, so we, we'll actually just wait. This is ultimately this is our end game playing. Uh, like if we're going to try to do things diplomatically. So let's just see if we can. Eventually they may they may just want to sort of uh, have a common border. But let's just leave that one where that is. Um, down over here, we've got a recon of zero. We don't know anything at all about this particular regime below us. This one over through here, we don't know anything at all about either. All right, so anyway, that's that's the, well, that's the first two lots of cards. We've, we've got the spies as well that, that we can send in. Let, let's go and send this one back into, actually, if I can do it two different ways. I can go and go send spy and go to the target and then tell it, okay, well, the one I really want to be going into is this little group in here, this Bastia. So let's go and, and try to roll this one. So we'll uh, execute the stratagem. And difficulty was 44, we rolled a 31. So we didn't manage to do it. So that was not good enough. We, did, we weren't high enough to be able to send the spy in. We now lose that card. But we can keep on playing other cards as long as we've got political points to do it. So that was the covert ops. And the nation cards are often things like increasing our income tax. Now, we don't want to go crazy with this. But uh, in this, at this instance, to find out what our in current income tax actually is, you can see income tax percent is 20%. We want to get that up to about 40% playing on, on the beginner difficulty level. So we're getting some income through through here. But if we can increase that to a 40, it's not going to impact the happiness. And sales tax as well is, a, is something else we can sort of then rise. So again, this little dashboard does give us all the really important information. So we just go back to our strat cards, increase income tax, give that one a crack. Difficulty of 70, we rolled a 41. Nope, couldn't do it. So this was our secretary role, that particular that particular one. We, nothing else we can really worry about through there. Headquarters can be applied. So we can, if we wanted to go on the defense, we can sort of apply these to defenses. Into zones, we can put the fat merchant in. I think we'll actually go and target this one. Now, it says that Bastia is not a, a target, a valid zone. Let's just go to the targets, go back to our location. And let's play both of these. We've got three fate, point, uh, fate, fate points. We can do these green cards cost fate points. So we can build a casino. So we'll execute that strategy. And so that's going to give us a big, big boost to the private investments in the, at that particular location. And we can also go and grab this guy as well. This is going to be like a, a robot that's quite powerful. We'll execute that one. We're down now to one fate point. Leaders, we can do different things in through here as well, and units as well, which we won't worry about that one. That one's not really ever worth doing, but let's just leave it where that is. So that's the cards. We've played a few different cards now, and if we... Um, sort of zoom around, we should find there's the robots we just brought in. Let's go and bring this one down. These are very poor at recon. 
and so I don't and these also don't push back the border so so they're not ideal um, in this instance but we can sort of blunder our way through a little bit and just risk it with these you tend to do that a little bit with the, with the uh, sentinels so that's where we are there we've got three decisions now we've got again we've got zone decisions we it's saying it's suggesting okay do you want to upgrade the town yep why not let's just do it get it so we can get more people in the town uh, the national decisions dissatisfied elements so we've got things for example like we can pay money to have democracy kick in or we can sort of go and uh, and sort of clamp down on them now um, if we go no sometimes we're going to need to have like forces stationed to actually make these decisions effective but let's just go no anyway because actually there's a bit of a 50 50 but 250 credits actually let's go and spend let's go and and sell this stuff and so we end up with a lot of money and then we, we will actually just go and buy them off so let's go and, and pay that one off right now now we come back to the model design council we've got the new apc if you've got something already built it'll have the 40 bp slash 160 if it's if it if you've got not, nothing of it built it'll just have one number let's go and now we've already built now the new infantry let's go and build the new machine gun so we'll just go to start development and so we'll build upon the existing one keep the advanced machine gun which has got nice firepower and again because of the how friendly the planet is we want to go from none to the padded enviro suit to get this 100 100 armor so we'll get that one done and um, I won't do too much in this game but um, we're just going to start to eventually we'll be able to get these ones friendly I hope or one of these anyway will hopefully be a, like a friendly farmer so the farmers are friendlier um, we've gone yeah I've gone well over time more time than what I actually wanted to spend one thing I still wanted, wanted to cover was how to build units so I might just sort of end this turn now and um, because we can focus, maybe we don't, maybe we do this one through aggression. Maybe we take this one aggressively. And then we can sort of uh, figure out the, the other ways. Uh, uh, like we've, the, the diplomacy eventually, like they, some of them will, they may ask us to sort of help them at some point, gain strength of will, discover a new tech, which is rocketry. We've made already made this new cycling gun as well. So we've got the cycling gun number two. Here's some more cards. So we're expanding. So we're actually now pushing the borders back. Just be aware that the thing... Actually, I keep on forgetting. Oh, hang on. Goal. Go to war with Elysius. Remember, you promised your subjects to do this. A promise is a promise. Where's Elysius? It's not that one, is it? No, that's... Oh, that is Elysius. Okay. So we've made a promise to go to war here. Okay, let's just do that. So what we can do here is we can actually, there's different ways we can go to war. Um, we can, uh, I don't know if we can talk to them directly. We've got one decision to make, the Model Design Council. So we've got these new ones done. Now we don't have to do anything. We might just have a quick look at the light tank while we've got it, while we've got it here. So we can just build upon the Abraham, Abraham and just see what it's got. It's got a 40 millimeter howitzer. Now, just to, this is important to sort of know, when you see the word howitzer, it means it's anti-infantry. And when you see high-velocity gun, it's, it's anti-tank. So we might ramp up the firepower of the tanks. Let's just do that now. We'll get the steel plating up to 50, which is the maximum steel plating. That's going to give it more armor. And um, what we want to do is if we hover over these things through here, we want to end up with at least more than half of the total weight in engine power. So the 200 here is less than half so the 300 is about half and then the 400 but it's going to use a lot more fuel so let's go across and use the medium diesel engine in this case it's going to it's going to chomp through the fuel so let's go and design that actually when we just when we get that one done we'll go and build one of those so we'll uh, just leave that one there and um yep they're all good we can just uh, start to move these up just grab these locations now we don't get to push the borders back on the on the majors. Like it doesn't matter what. Like even if they've got no no uh, forces on the other side, we don't get to do that. So we'll just push all of these back. Now declaring war is um, is basically we just start start to attack. So if we start the attack, relation level is low. It gives you a six percent fist profile if you invade. Don't worry about that one. Are you sure you want to invade? I'm going to go. No for now. So we must have made a promise. I don't remember doing that actually. But anyway, we'll just do that and we'll just get ready for the invasion. Now, we pretty much all, all we have to do is just move this one up and just move these around. Now, 
We've got good recon in there. We've got recon of 40 and that's all that's required. So we pretty much know that there's nothing actually in there. So we can start to sort of surround these if we wanted to. Leave them where they are for now. And then we'll just get even more forces back up. You'll see that as terrain gets more difficult, it's the it's harder for us to, to have the supplies coming back out this way. So we're going to keep inside those supplies. If we were running out of, like this one here is running out of supplies as well at the back. So it's sort of, you know, where, there's, where there would be no supply coming back up that way. Uh, let's move this one down. So we've now got that one. Up. I'm assuming that there'll be nothing in here. So we'll just have a bit of a look through there. Oops, I, did, I went against what I just said to, to not do. <laughs> That, so there's something down in here pushing this one away. Okay, they've all moved. So we'll move them down there as well. So we've got a couple of other villages down through here. And taking these towns is sort of like the secret to uh, to really expanding. Like you just want to you want to take the as big a towns as possible. Um, okay, so we'll end our turn again. Again, you can see that all of our resources are now sort of on the on the uh, on going up. Now it's very difficult to make an attack. Actually, this one broke through over here. We're now going to have to go and mask that area to stop it from breaking through into other terrains that we don't want it to. Okay, we've got the new Abraham tool already. And we've discovered a new model type, an anti-tank gun as well. Our scav teams, like at one of the locations we, we got, we got six machinery from that one. That's good. And we found a, a different building, a, a GR cataphract. GR in the game means Galactic Republic. So it's an old tech that we've actually sort of then found. Um, okay, so this is uh, offering a state to become a client state. I wonder if that's actually something we can do. I'm seeing that's a strategic map. This one in here, miners, offer client, target. Yeah, this one here is a difficulty, high difficulty, um, high difficulty. But we could we could offer it. We might as well offer it to them. Affirmative. Yeah, we only rolled an eighty-two, so that was a failure. <laughs> All right, so we'll we'll now start to declare war. So we'll finish this off with just the declaration of war. You can see that they've now moved into this ter this terrain. Actually, this is another this is a tank unit that we picked up. Is going to be extremely powerful. So even even though we don't get to see everything, we, we'll still just keep on sort of rolling forward. Uh, there's not going to be anything much else down this way. We haven't declared war yet. I'll keep that one there. It may try to break through. I'll just keep that one back that side as well. So let's go and build ready for the ready for the invasion and I can then talk a little bit about the actual readiness of units and uh, and also the combat. You need to have you want to have an attack of about 8 to 1 to be fairly secure. So let's just go along. Now one thing I did mention before is going to keep this current points along here so we can see what's going on with the roads. So we've got a lot of points sort of running along these road networks and and going off in, into different locations, but we've got a, a lot of logistics. So if I press number 1, we can see it goes all the way through to there. Now, whatever the minimum number is along the road from, from wherever your Supreme Headquarters is, is going to be what the game is going to need to, um, to be able to build a unit along the road. So we can build one right in here. So if I click on that hex right there, and if I go down into, my, into this top thing and through this side and go to raise formation, just be aware when the game starts, it's likely to start with a core selected and you don't you hardly ever want that i think the default should have been brigade anyway these are the sizes you want core is going to cost you a fortune to get it so just go to back to brigade and we want instead of instead of having an operational hq which will then create like a small army which we can actually go and get if we wanted to we can get sort of some of these some of these can be built as armies we can just go to an independent group and we have much more open to us there the tanks are really built for uh, for getting the um, for, for breaking through infantry and, and against the minor factions these are perfect so the light tanks that we just got we can get uh, 50 of those so it's a, we can get a hundred percent of those if we go and click on that one through there we can see we've got enough troops we've got 5,000 troops over there we've got 500 to build this one uh, the items it's going to require some metal it's and which we've got a lot of it's going to require some industrial points which we've got a fair amount of so the items are no problem at all. The logistics, 
yep, we've got on, along the road, the lowest number along the road was uh, 961. We just need 125. This is fine. And because we built over the top of the other Abraham, we've got 50 of our new design. So the new design is coming through. We'll just raise that formation. And there it is there. Now, let's see if we can build a second one of those. Quite often, two is better than one. But you've got to be careful because the fuel is actually doing okay. But it will start to go down the more tanks we end up getting. So let's just go back in and raise formation again. And we can see now with the independent battalion, our lights are down to 12. So why can we no longer build it? What's, got, what's, what's wrong in here? And we can see when we look at the numbers that we, our logistics is still fine. We, it took 125 off the current logistics. So that's now been reduced, but it's still more than enough. The, uh, the items are the problem and the troops we have. We took 500 off the troops from before. So we've got enough troops. So it's the items. Now we do actually have enough uh, metal, you can see there, but we've only got 33 industrial points left. So we need more industrial points to build another, another stack of these. So we're going to have to wait a turn or two. So let's just go back and cancel. And um, and then we'll just leave everything where, where this actually is currently. So we'll just go and uh, end our turn here. Actually, work one decision. If I do no new orders, it'll just start trying to discover new sorts of things like the anti-tank guns and the APCs. So we'll just let it do that for a little while. And uh, we'll just go forward in time again. Actually, have we moved everyone up? No, we haven't. Oh, I don't know. Like You don't want to be making it too uncomfortable for them, but um, we certainly will push. I want to, what I want to do is I want to stop, I want to stop this player from getting in and surrounding these, these cities. I want to do that myself. There's a group there. We'll just move these across and have these come down. So it's going to start getting uncomfortable along this border. So we may end up, you know, we may need to sort of build other armies to sort of protect ourselves against Maxdorf at some stage. You can see that they're building a lot of stuff already. They've got, you know, similar sorts of mines of what we've got. Uh, they've got a, a dome farm because it's too hot for Terran farming down there. Um, all of these things sort of, it's, it's incredibly deep game, really incredibly deep game. So let's just leave all of them where they are. We've got this other tank group in through here as well. Let's just end our turn here. And then we'll go on the war path. I might go in with what we've got, actually. And I can then sort of talk a little bit about battles and how they actually work. Killed 400 infantry. So discovered water deposits, which we don't need. We've discovered radiation filters, found fuel. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we generated one one new stratagem. Right, it's okay. So we've got this one now established. Uh, what we'll do is we will declare war. Now, we'll look at the tank unit and we'll just analyze this one here. If I just go back into this location here, you'll see that the this is this is an important tab here. This is the readiness. And this is the action point. So it's got it's got like 90 action points. 100, most, most units will have 100. Like that's got 100 in through there, 100 in through there. Do also be aware that the terrain that anything is on will actually have also a, a bearing for how well it will be in, uh, entrenched. So the readiness is important. This is a, um, this uh, the readiness is a multiplier of its combat ability. So this is only be operating at 70%. If I left it there another turn, it would actually be, it'd be even better. Uh, it's got no entrenchment. If we have a look at some of the others, this one's entrenched at 75. This one down here is entrenched at 125. So why is that happening? And this is where we actually then can go and have a look. This one is on agricultural land. So it's in, in farmland. And when we hover over the agriculture, we can then see for infantry types, it's got a, a um, an A uh, entrenchment. So when, we first, when it first goes into an entrenchment, it's going to have 50. And the maximum entrenchment, if it doesn't move, will slowly get up to 125, which is what that one is. This one out through here is in grassy plains. And when we hover over that one, its maximum entrenchment, if it just doesn't move at all, is 75. So if you don't move your forces, they will entrench natively, or, or you know, basically. Now, if I go into here, this one here is a um, it's also grassy plains. But when we look at the tanks, we can see there that these don't entrench. So they don't actually have any entrenchment. So we'll just move these in. We're going to start the uh, getting ready for the for the combat. So if we just go and right click on this one here, 
Are you sure you want to invade? By doing this one, we do declare war. So we'll go yes. And now we can sort of tell it, okay, well, now we're going to go and start attacking. Now, I've got odds of 1.4 to 1, and I'm really looking for at looking for odds of, of 8 to 1 or thereabouts. With the tanks, it's not super critical because they're armoured. They can sort of protect themselves against these sorts of forces. But we should be able to get this one to a reasonable amount fairly quickly. And um, this is just a summary as to why we're getting those numbers. Like there's, there's terrain... Uh, it, 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 things we have to t take care of. For example, the Abrahams attacking into agriculture is a negative 25%. I might just show you where that is so you can sort of try to figure out what's going on. So if I have these guys selected and hover over agricultural, which is what they're on, we can then see that to attack, an attack modifier for tanks is minus 25%. There's no modifier for infantry or anything else, so we can actually go and bring these infantry up. Now, there's also other ways of playing the game, but you can see there that I don't get an attack there, but I do there. There's a little arrow. So why is that? What's going on there? If I hover over that one, you'll see that down the bottom through here, it says that there's a movement mode of 60 action points, which means it's only going to have, like, it's going to use up most of its action points to move to that location. If I move to there, it's, 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 um, it's only 45. So there will be some movement left over. Let's just move that one down. Uh, this one here can actually move around to here, but it's going to chew up 65. This one here is going to only chew up 30, so let's go and do that as well. Uh, this one here is a, uh, is a is an artillery unit, so I can move that one in as well, and it can still get an, a, an attack. So that's probably enough. Actually, I'll move that one up into there as well, so we can attack from another angle. Now, there's, there's two different types of attacks. If you do actually have artillery, and we have artillery in this group as well, I can right-click on this, and you can see it's one to six odds. I can switch the type of attack to ranged attack. And so I can then say, okay, well, look, I'm gonna go with you and with you, get all of these. And so there's no return fire expecting. Let's just do this and soften the target before we go in with the actual attack. In fact, I might just leave them out because they've got a lot of other different types of units. We'll just go in with this one here. So it's gonna now hit, hit this with the artillery and soften up the target a little bit. Now, the more recon you actually have, the more effective this will be. But anyway, let's just start that way. I just wanted to show that aspect. And really, we'll just go and grab the tank at the start here. And we can start to bring in the other different units. Now, I can either click them on in here and tell them, OK, you guys are all part of this attack. We're up to 2.8. Let's just go with it because of the tanks may be able to still carry the day. So you can see you need a lot of forces to be able to push these sorts of guys back out of here. And you can sw switch things on or off to see if you get better or worse results. You know, like if we turn things on or off, we can sort of see what the, how the odds do change. Now, they'll, they'll flick around a little bit as you sort of turn uh, components on or off. But, you know, like it's, it's around that three to one odds. Let's go and do an attack. And all we need to do is just push them out of this location. Enemy. And so tanks are the ones that we really want to focus on and just see if all of these will then run away. And we did win. We did lose some units with our actual attack, but the tanks did the job. Now, when you look at this screen, if it's got a, a white number, it means that it actually had a hit on a unit where it sort of did some, like it, it did some morale type damage. And if it's got a red number, it's actually got a kill. So the actual little skulls that we see there, they're, they're the kills. So these the tanks actually got three of the kills. But you don't generally need a lot of kills to be able to push units back out of here. So we'll just click on OK. We've now pushed them out of Bastia. So we now can move the forces back in if we wanted to, as many as we like. So we'll just move them in. And so Bastia is now being conquered. And so we then we start to manage this particular town as well. Now, when we do take this one over, I'll just go back into decisions. We'll hire the candidate. Yes, we will. And minor worker strike. Let's go and actually, we're running out of money. Here we go. I forgot to actually do what we said we were going to do, which was to go and get some, some credits. That's bad. <laughs> okay, so trade. We're going to go and sell as many of the rare earth as we can. We're going to get heaps of heaps of credits from that one. So it sort of gets us out of the uh, out of the red. So that was a problem. And that's that's going to if you're finding that things aren't working well for you, it may be that you've actually left things run down and you don't have any money uh, because it'll make everyone unhappy when there's no money around the place. So you've got to pay different people. So anyway, that was good. We've got a bit there. We can go back to our decisions and we can then just give in and, and pay it off with democracy. Although most of the people are pretty happy for us to use autocracy. Although we don't have very much left. Actually, this is a peak. Yeah, no, we don't want to do that. We'll give in in this case. 
Right, so we've got, still got a lot of money there left over at this point in time. So it was just back going back through the traders. Um, I will just end the turn and then we'll sort of see that these guys will then disappear. And just, I'll just go through one of the other little things you may want to get, in, get control of when you do take over another town. Um, because you want to keep your logistics network still flowing. And that's important. Or oh, they've gone in around the other city. So they're now starting to surround the, surround the city before we did. This is the major player. You kept your promise. So we, our word score goes up and a few other different things. We've conquered the zone. We've discovered a medium tank now. If we wanted to go and start building that one. We've got um, yep different other cards. All sorts of different stuff going on through there. So we've now taken over this whole zone. Their army disappears. If we did that to the major player, their army wouldn't disappear. But we've now got the uh, the tanks have now sort of rolled through into this particular location. I'm not going to min max how to do all the different bits and pieces, but this is the start of some uh, some good stuff for us in through this this area. But if we go to Bastia and have a look at the again the assets, you'll notice that they've got a, a transport hub back in through this side, and we don't want that to be privately run. We want to control that ourselves, and so. You can nationalize it and spend some money on it, or you can disband it. So it's only at level one, so it's going to cost me two political points. I can disband it and then build my own if I wanted to. But generally, as a rule of thumb, you want to be in control of these yourselves. So I'll just nationalize it because we've got the money. So we'll just the happiness will drop, but it's, it's going to be low anyway. This is now an asset that we control. And so we'll now start to get the truck assets coming along that particular road. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. That's sort of like a bit of a rundown as to sort of how to get started in the game. I hope that was helpful. And you can see there, I'm not min-maxing very much. Um, you certainly can min-max, but don't feel obligated to do it. It's a, a fun game, even without the min-maxing. We haven't even looked at things that I would normally look at. Like, for example, we haven't looked to see what how good our, our uh, team is or anything at all. We're just playing the game. <laughs> I'll catch you next time.